two, three. If the world from you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds the little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there. If your body suffers pain and your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair. Jesus knows the pain you feel. He can save and he can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there. Well, good morning, everyone. I have a question for you today. Do you trust me? Do you trust me that I won't spill this entire bag of water all over myself and all over the desk? Or what if I was holding it over your head? What if I poke this bag with a pencil? Do you, would you believe me? Would you trust me that I won't spill this all over your head or over me? Well, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna poke a pencil right through this bag and you're not gonna wanna get wet. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh man, do you still believe me? Do you trust me? Look at that. I poked a hole right through that bag. Do you still trust me? What if I poke another pencil through this bag? Will it pop? Will it get you wet? Will it get me wet? Let's see, let's go. Here we go. Poke another pencil through this bag. Oh, 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 look at that. Can you believe that? Would you trust me if I told you that you would never get wet when I poked a pencil through this? What if I do one more pencil right through this bag? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Can you believe that? All those pencils, six holes in this bag and nothing leaking out of it. How is that possible? Well, I want you to know that this bag is um, a really kind of a similar thing that has to do with God, trusting God. This plastic bag is made of a type of polymer, and a polymer is a large molecule with a whole lot of little repeating units. So when you poke a pencil through, the polymer simply rearranges itself to close the gap between the pencil and the bag keeping the water inside. And sometimes in life, we can feel like we're getting poked with holes. Friends move away, or family members get sick, or we get in trouble and it hurts. But trusting God is kind of like trusting that you won't get wet, even when we hold this big bag of water full of pencils. Even when it seems like everything is going horribly wrong, we can still trust God. God doesn't, all, doesn't ever stop caring for us, doesn't ever stop protecting us, doesn't ever stop watching out for us. He's always with us. He'll never stop loving you and he'll never stop loving any of us. I think it's always better if we can trust God in our lives, even when we sometimes get holes poked in us. I hope this plastic bag will remind you that trusting God, even when it seems hard to do, 
is always the best thing to do. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for watching over us and for loving us and protecting us. There are a whole lot of things in life that come at us. Help us remember this little um, bag full of water and trust you in all things. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, guys, try this at home and put it over your mom and dad's head and have fun. Good morning, Tennyson. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 24 through 34. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over 60 million packages are delivered in America every day. And the church certainly gets its share. Millions of people should be a little bit happier every day because they got what they ordered. They got what they said they wanted. But it's not enough. The U.S. Happiness Index has gone down every year for the last seven years. Instead of being happier, we're a nation of worriers. 60% of adults in the U.S. admit that they feel stressed out, according to a recent Gallup poll. Of course, 2020 was a huge year for worry, and the number who worry increased by 21% last year. One of the things we worry about is things. How will we pay for all the things we want? And where will we put these things when we get them? Can we protect our things with insurance or locks? And if we have to move, can we take the things with us? After we die, can we still control our things? What happens when you worry? First, there's stress. When you're stressed, your blood pressure goes up and the level of cortisol increases. This causes lots of problems, including the possibility of stroke. Chronic stress contributes to immune system suppression, diabetes, and even some psychiatric problems. Scripture says you can't add an hour to your life by worrying. But did you know you can actually shorten your life and change your brain just by worrying? A fight is always taking place inside a worrier's brain. It's unending rounds of panic versus reason. In the anxious brain, the amygdala generates too many false alarms 
such as perceiving a harmless situation as very threatening or an offhand remark as a huge insult. Over time, the prefrontal cortex where reasoning occurs loses its ability to suppress all those false alarms. Anxiety is also bad for your memory. It shrinks the hippocampus where your brain processes long-term memories. All types of memories become limited except the memories that feed your anxiety. Memories of failure, threat, danger remain easily accessible. Memories of contentment and satisfaction get buried deeper in your mind. Remember Jesus saying, you can't have two masters. Human life always serves something. And that's good because service gives life meaning. But undivided or devoted service can only be given to one master. You've probably heard you can't worship God and mammon. Mammon is an old Aramaic word for property, including money. Mammon is your stuff. But the things you think you possess can start to possess you. They claim your money, your time, and your energy. They consume your thoughts. In short, things become your master. And when that happens, things are number one. And God is maybe a distant number two. When you worry about getting things, things come between you and God. How do you keep this from happening? Well, Jesus had some good advice. First, he says you should not worry because of who you are. You are made in God's image. You are valuable. God won't forget to provide for you. God has already built into creation the means for taking care of all living things. He knows what you need. Now remember, Jesus doesn't say you won't have to work. Even the birds of the air have to get busy and gather food. You will have to expend some energy to get the good things that God has provided for you. So work is necessary, but worry is not necessary. What's important is using your wealth for God's purposes instead of your own. When you worry, you diminish your value. Second, you should not worry because it is useless. Worry would be worthwhile if it added to the length of your life or made you healthier or happier. But in fact, it diminishes your enjoyment of being alive. Third, you should not worry because of your testimony. Verse 32 says, For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. When we worry, we act like the pagans or non-believers who do not know the Heavenly Father. Imagine that two people unfortunately get cancer. One is a Christian and the other is not. How tragic if the Christian accepts this bad news no better than the non-believer and responds as if there is no God. Faith is reliance on the care and power of God. People who focus on things have little faith. The Pharisees pursued material things because they never learned to live by faith. Worrying shows a lack of faith in what God can do. To sum it up, Jesus says, relax, have a positive attitude, and pray. God knows what you need better than you know it yourself. Direct your attention to doing God's will. That should be your priority. Troubles will come each day, but God will be there to help you. Material concerns are just distracting and unnecessary. Problems are only multiplied when you worry about them. 
Without God, there simply is no antidote to anxiety. Imagine how crazy this sounded to the tax collector Matthew, who wrote down this advice when he heard Jesus say it. Imagine how crazy it sounded to the crowd gathered around Jesus. The people who heard Jesus long ago were just as obsessed with getting things as we are. And they worked from dawn to dark, barely scraping by, barely making a living, and paying those hated taxes to Rome. How could they possibly relax and trust God? How can we relax and trust God? Are you getting what God is giving you? That's the question Jesus asked that crowd long ago and the question he asks us still today. You shop and you buy and you order online and you work yourself half to death and you worry yourself sick getting things. Don't let getting keep you from receiving. God is sending you love. And it's more than UPS, FedEx, Amazon, and the U.S. Postal Service can possibly deliver. But God delivers it all the time. God is simply saying, I only want to be with you. That's the title of a hit song from the 90s group, Hootie and the Blowfish. But it could also be a great sermon title because in just a few words, it expresses the very heart of every close relationship. And the song is about a relationship that definitely needs some work. In the song, the girl is constantly upset and dissatisfied, but the boy just wants to love her. I only want to be with you, he sings. And that's what God is saying to us. I only want to be with you. Are you getting what God is giving? Or do you block delivery? Do you focus on material goods? Do you focus on accumulating wealth? Do you worry about food and drink and clothes and a thousand other things? Accept God's gift. Open the box. It's from God's Wish Fulfillment Center. You'll never want to send it back. It will be exactly what you wanted. In fact, it's perfect. It's love. And when you get what God is giving, you'll have something precious, something you could never afford to buy, something money can't buy. And when you feel God's love filling your entire being, your only response will be, thank you, God. I only want to be with you.